Welcome to the Pharos Fit Podcast, where we help you to explore your capacity to move better, push further, and achieve your limitless potential through fitness, nutrition, recovery, and lifestyle. Welcome back to the Pharos Fit Podcast. I uh, hope you guys are all doing well out there. Um, good to be back with you again. Um, we are here today with uh, a wonderful guy, uh, Andre Hall. Uh, I'm also here with uh, Emily Cavell, my delightful wife. I didn't say that sarcastically. She's a delightful wife. <laughs> and uh, Brandon, my producer. Hey, Brandon. What's going on, guys? Great to be back. Good, 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 great. great to be here. I'm honored. Oh, well, we're honored to have you. Honestly, <laughs> honored to have you. I feel like sitting in a room with Andre is just like signing up for your day to be better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, you guys is, are this, the is best. Kind of, this is kind of how I want to start. Like, Andre is literally <laughs> the happiest motherfucker I know. <laughs> no, seriously. I, I mean, I... I, I mean, I, I get, get to work early. Like, so let's say, let's say I get here like 5.40. Andre's been here for two hours. <laughs> he's made breakfast. He's had coffee. He's meditated. He's set up the gym. He's meditated. He's smiling. He's happy. He's joking around. Happiest guy I know. Seriously. Like, bar none. Happiest Just, guy. And it's not <laughs> even put on or fake it's, it's the fake. most authentic it, it I, I i we've talked about this andre how like you're yeah. so happy it pisses people off it does it does and it's really i mean it it's funny to me but i think the funny like when i laugh it just pisses them off well, even it's, more it's, it's like i'm not like, trying yeah it's also like in today's society it's like if you're that happy it's like what's wrong with this guy right yeah, is so happy? yeah. it has to be a drug or it has to be for <laughs> yeah. something or fake or put on and right. it's like this is real it's it's possible to really be Fundamentally, fundamentally, authentically happy for absolutely no reason. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Happy for no reason. That's happy the goal. Happy for no reason. That is the that's, goal. And that's a t-shirt right there. That's Wyatt. That's your son every Aww. single moment. <laughs> All the time. Like, that's the goal to get back to Wyatt. Aww. All yeah, the time. Back to Wyatt. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Oh, we are born happy. It's, it's the world that makes us miserable. Exactly. And Preach. he doesn't know about that yet. The <laughs> world hasn't gotten to him yet. It's, it's like, stay that way, little man. Way. Yeah. What's your, <laughs> Don't what, leave uh, it. What, what's your excuse? <laughs> you do know about the world. Yeah. yeah it's uh, the Des world. Despite can be, the world. Despite the yeah. World. Despite the world. It's just like you have to remember above anything else. We're always remember who you are and what's most important. And then at the end of the day, that can fluctuate. But is that fluctuating based on how you want it to change or how the world is dictating that you should change? And that's a very, very big difference. Like being an artist in LA, being an actor, and then also being a normal person are two separate people. It's two separate Andres. And when you mix the two, that's when the trouble starts. Because it's like there's Andre the actor, and then there's Andre the human being. Andre the human being complements the actor. The actor is just a fictitious person who becomes anything. But Andre is like forever. So, so, so. take us back because this is mm -hmm. fascinating. But let, let's go. Let's go back somewhat uh, to the beginning of Andre. Okay. Andre. Andre. One point oh. One point oh. Yeah, baby before, Dre. <laughs> baby Dre. Baby Dre. <laughs> so, Dre. so before before the the specimen that we see before us today, and yeah. I, I'm assuming you weren't always this happy, or maybe you were. <laughs> but how did you kind of create this happiness for yourself? Where did it come from? And you know. What were the kind of like, I guess, the foundations for this life you've kind of created for yourself? Well, little Andre, I think just as kids, as we were talking about with Wyatt, like kids are just naturally just happy. Right. Like they're just fundamentally like just no conditioning of the world. They're just here. They're just existing. Like there's no trying to be anything other than like maybe watching a cartoon and like something that brings them joy. I've always been that way. Like for some reason, I have no idea why but I've always seen the world as like, just like lollipops and rainbows. Like this just like, I don't, I really don't even have like the words that could really describe. I've just always been a person who thinks that like, you can always find the good in something. You can always see the good in someone. And, right, now, uh, uh, and people listening will think, well, that sounds like a very privileged thing. You must have had a wonderful life, but oh, it, no. you didn't. No, so no, 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 I think no. it's important to like make that. Yeah, make that distinction. Right, yeah. Like happiness has been a non-negotiable for you. Yeah. Right. And a lot of the time growing up uh, in my childhood, like happiness was like a way to just keep going. It was almost like a survival mechanism. I grew up in Indiana uh, in the Midwest. Uh, my father's Irish and my mom is black. Uh, but where I grew up is a very rough, uh, pretty hood, pretty ghetto, like kind of like uh, space, believe it or not, in Indiana. And being mixed, like I think my inner white boy, if you will, came out more than anything. But to me, it was just that's just how I am. 
like my dad was white. And it's like, okay, cool. I didn't meet him. So I was like 19 years old. So I couldn't like, you know, have a point of reference. But then when you hang out with like these super hood, ghetto, gold grill, face tattoo guys, and then here I am with skinny jeans, a Led Zeppelin t-shirt and a skateboard, <laughs> you get kind of tested. And then on top of that, um, living in a single parent home, well, we always like bounced around. Like, right. I didn't know we were really poor. I just thought like my mom liked to move around a lot. Again, the mentality of a child, it's like you just kind of just figure it out. And so just being poor, like we lived in shelters. Um, unfortunately, my mom dated a lot of guys uh, who abused her physically. Right. And it was just constantly on the move and sometimes not having food to eat, sometimes not having clean clothes for school and dealing with people making fun of you. So a lot of the time, just being happy with myself was an escape. Like it was an escape to like, this is the one place nobody can take my joy because the world didn't give it to me, therefore the world can't take it away. So I need to be happy with myself. So I think that was kind of like the foundation of like, okay, you're gonna get tested in life. There are things that are gonna happen that are beyond your control, but the only thing you can control is how you feel about it. And I just got really good about mastering how I feel about things. I mean, that's an amazing, evolved State. statement yeah such really a i see to me yeah. that's just like that's my normal and i think everybody else is weird for not being able to do that I, that <laughs> sounds kind of mean but i don't mean it in that way but like to You're me like, what do you mean guys just yeah just happen. like i don't understand but then it's just i don't know i've just always been wired differently that way like to me i always know like i just know inherently it's all gonna work out i have no idea how i don't know how we're gonna get through this I don't even know how we're gonna, like I used to say this to my mom and she would be like in tears. Like, I don't know how we're gonna eat. I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know where we're gonna live. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> I can fast for a really long time, mommy. Wow. Like, it's just gonna be fine. <laughs> wow. Or like she would be crying and then she would lie and say that like something's in her eye. I'm like, yeah, tears, cause you're sad. And it's okay, just feel the sadness, but it's not gonna last forever. Wow. But that's the thing is just, and I, I think it's just like kind of finding a creative way to not sit in the the pain or sit right. in the the filth or the gunk you and know? it also sounds like you really were such a rock for others like a, a lot of you know people say that when you are unhappy like one of the best ways to bring yourself joy is in the service of others and yes. it sounds yeah. like and you also being a virgo too it's like i <laughs> i don't know how to function if i'm not being observed right and, very, and i think all of that just kind of just like meshes together so perfectly and it works for me in my life Right. But um, but yeah, I just and I, I just didn't have a choice. Absolutely. Like somebody had to be the rock. And if everybody's like all either angry, scared or just really emotional, no decisions are being made. Everyone's just wallowing in their stuff. And I get it. Nobody taught them how to do that. Somehow, some way I taught myself how to get out of it. Right. Or you were just honestly, like I say this, like you are a gift. Like oh, I, I say so this much. because I, you know, as we'll talk about later <laughs> with the work that we did together with the mobility and meditation oh, challenge, so it's great. like, it was that so was like great. the greatest month of my life. I spent time oh, creating so content honored. with you. Man, I was I so happy that. every Thank day. So like it was just like, you are a gift into this earth. And when people see you, like, it's like, you just have like this shining light around you. I, uh, just, just, note people that she she highlighted that her time with andre was more happy than <laughs> the time that we got married or the holidays that we no, spent no i said together. it was one of the best months of my life like yeah, imagine so, a full so month so not the month that she got married <laughs> no or that's the one day that is but one day oh. um digging so, myself deeper and deeper <laughs> have you was there ever a, a time not the in birth your life? of my child <laughs> yeah. a time in your life where you're like you know what i, I fucking can't right now i'm i'm like, oh I'm, yeah so yeah. there was times when you oh yeah. gosh man i really well actually i don't wish you could meet that andre but i go back and i talk to that andre from about i'd say about 10 to 15 years ago it was a very very different andre and he had lost all his light he lost all his optimism he lost all his faith in god and the divine and jesus buddha krishna anybody who he thought was up there andre just lost it and what age was that uh was that it? was about 20 i'm gonna say about 23 24. it right. was it was just very different because growing up uh, where i grew up um, it's not exactly the bible belt in indiana but it's pretty close so i was in church six days a week right. monday through saturday like bible study deacon board meeting choir rehearsal 
like you know uh, we don't have altar boys in christianity but it's like pretty much just like moving everything around like i was always at church right like i could probably recite the bible from beginning to end wow. that's just how it was and we didn't really have a choice to ask questions or challenge it and i just i found so many contradictions in everything i was learning like i never understood how you can say that in Christianity, we are loving and we accept everybody. But when I play with Muhammad, who was Muslim across the street, you said I was going to hell, and the whole church threw holy water on me and prayed that. Wait, the that demon literally would happened. That literally happened. Best good friend Muhammad. Um, he's like married and have a wonderful life now. But they moved into our neighborhood. They lived across the street, and none of the other little kids would play with him because they thought he was weird. And I was like, I know what that feels like because I'm the weird one who's in skinny right. jeans in wintertime, like wanting to go skateboard in the snow. So me and Muhammad became really good friends. And every day Muhammad would stop no matter what he was doing. And he would face north towards Mecca and get on his hands and knees and pray. And I was like, why do you do that? Like, who are you praying to? Like, why do you have to do it? And I just thought it was very interesting because yeah. Like they taught me the Quran, they taught me like scriptures from the Quran. It was so beautiful and there's so many similarities to it. But because how I grew up, that was the devil, quote unquote. Very serious stuff. Like there were many times I was in front of the church where people were just yelling oh at me God. and throwing water on me. because They thought I was a demon. I'm like, I'm y'all the demons, like you throwing water at people. That's crazy. So me and Muhammad's friendship, uh, we're still friends to this day, but it just showed me at a very early age that like, if you go against the status quo, or if you challenge the belief system of the collective body, you will be crucified. Absolutely. Right. And I know what that feels like on so many levels. And I think going back to the Andre of 24, 25, I think all of that just kindly just came, finally right. came to a head. I was right. just like, nah, this isn't right. And on top of like other things, like witnessing, like just horrific things that happen, like from the physical abuse to my mother, being sexually abused by a family member, being sexually abused in the church, that really like can throw a wrench in everything. I don't care how optimistic you are, how happy and joyous you are, it will steal your life. Well, right? exactly. Yeah, and, and that's so, that's kind of what I, happened. I mean, that's a that's a thing people don't make it out of. Like that, you yeah. know, people don't often overcome that. Uh, overcome that, you know. Or, I think a lot of people don't really have a way to deal with it or sit with it because it's so painful and it's such a dark thing. And when you when it happens to you, you feel like you're an alien, like it's right. never happened to anyone else but you. And if you say something, like all the insecurities start to pop up, what if they don't believe me? What if they think that I'm lying? Oh my God, am I gay? Oh my God, is this another strike that I'm going to hell on top of praying with Muhammad, on top of wanting to be an artist, on top of the list goes on. So it's basically, it's just one of those, it's just a thing that happens all the time, unfortunately, but it does. and. To be really honest, it happens more in the church than anywhere else. And I it's just something that happened. Like I've done a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work to forgive that Andre and to really make peace with that's just something that happened as opposed to living in the story of victimhood. Right. And I think that Andre to this Andre now, like I, I really live from that space of like, okay, I'm not a victim. What so that, was that pivotal moment? Sorry. Um, I think the pivotal moment for me was sitting in a car with a gun that I stole from a pimp that I knew and I was going to blow my brains out. And that was in your mid 20s? Yeah. Yeah. I was. Oh, man. So mm. I guess how, how, how long did that period last at the time of kind of like That was about crisis. two years. It's, that was about years a good like, two years of like trying to party it just away, lost, trying to trying numb to, it away. Right. I mean, I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict. I became homeless. Um, stealing from 7-Eleven to eat, like um, trying to charm people at 24 Hour Fitness so I could go shower from time to time. Just anything to survive pretty much. And it just, it got to a point where I just, I hated myself so much. I hated the world. I hated what happened to me. And I hated that nobody would listen to me. And I just didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel worthy enough. And I was just like, they were right. Everybody was right. Like maybe I am a demon. Maybe I am the devil. I just don't want to be here anymore. Right. I'm done. Right. And I sat in that car and, oh, man. But yeah, what stopped you from pulling the trigger? Well, this, yeah. Uh, ooh, still gives me chills, like just chills talking here? about it. Oh, yeah. I was um, I was in, I had a like a 97 Honda Accord, had like 5 million miles on it. I have no idea. Honda's are the greatest cars <laughs> ever. And 
I was um, I was just fed up and I was tired and my best friend in the world was a pimp that I knew. He had all kinds of pistols, so I stole a gun and I was like, well, he'll be all right. He's got plenty more. And I just decided one night, I'm just, I'm done. I'm out of here. And in this car, uh, the radio was in there, but it never worked. Like the entire time I had this car, the ra- it just you couldn't turn it on no matter what happened. The radio never worked. And I remember sitting there and I had the gun in my right hand And I sat there and I just prayed so hard. I was like, all right, everybody's been telling me my whole life you're there. You've allowed all this horrible shit to happen to me. Where are you now? You better prove it because I'm either about to meet you or I'm gonna meet your red friend with a pitchfork and horns (laughs) in a couple seconds. And I put the gun in my mouth and right before I pulled the trigger, the radio turned on. Oh shit. It turned on. And a song started playing that said, I need you now. It's a spiritual song by Smokey Norfolk. And the whole song played and I just sat there in complete and utter shock. And basically the premise of the song is, God, I need you right now. I'm in a dark place and I need you to come and save me. And as soon as the song ended, the radio turned off and I had that car for another six months and I never got the radio to work again. And that was Holy the shit. only reason why I'm still sitting here today. That's the only reason. My God, that's amazing. Oh my goodness. It's like, I mean, just cause I mean, I can go right back in that car right. and I You're swear. Right and the, the blessing on top of that is I actually met Smokey Norfolk one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, man, and I just, I just started him. crying. Yeah. I, I told him what happened and, oh, yeah. and he started crying and like, there's just two grown ass black men hugging and crying in the middle of a oh, church. And it was like one of the greatest um, moments meeting him, but one of the greatest like life altering moments that happened that's in that incredible. car. And that's the only reason that's what changed it all. And ever since then, it's like so, been a different Andre. So, so from that moment, like mm-hmm. what were the first steps then to recovery? What was, oh, well, that it's, it's been quite a journey. Um, I think about a couple days later, um, I had met this girl and unfortunately, I was just, oh, I was trying to get in her pants. If I'm really being honest. Yeah. <laughs> she was, oh, she was fine. She was so beautiful. And um, she knew I was like kind of like, you know, trying to do that. And um, she was like, hey, you want to go to church with me? And I was like, Maybe. Ugh, like, here we go again, you know? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. So um, she took me to um, Agape International Spiritual Center. It used to be in Culver City. It's not there anymore. It's in Beverly Hills now. And... I didn't know it was a spiritual center. I didn't even know what that meant, you know? And <laughs> and um, so I went and I was just standing there and I just remember standing in line. And um, I think about a year prior to that, I watched a movie that my friend played me when I was high as a kite called The Secret. Have you guys ever heard of The Secret? It's like no. a book and they turn it into a movie. It's oh, basically, yeah. oh. it's like a film or a book that talks about there's a secret about life that people aren't talking about. It's almost having like a sixth sense kind of thing of knowing. Mm-hmm. I thought like, it. yeah. Yeah. And it's a very spiritual kind of thing. And I just remember there was one guy in that movie that I saw. Everybody else I didn't really care about. But there was one guy, that Reverend Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. And I was like, man, I feel like I know that dude. Like, this is crazy. So fast forward like a year now, I'm standing in line with this girl and Reverend Michael walks out and I'm in the new members line just standing. I was like, wait, that's the dude from The Secret. And he looks dead at me, but it's not like he's looking at me. It's like he's looking through me and he smiles and he just starts walking like right towards me. And I'm just like, what is going on? I know he's going to say something. I don't know this man. I'm freaking out. And he walks right up to me and says, hey, Andre, it's good to see you again. I said, huh? He's like, it's good to see you. I've been, man, it's so good to see you. And he gave me a big hug. And I was like, have we met before? And he was like, oh, many times. But well, you wouldn't believe me this round if I told you. So welcome home. <laughs> and walked away. And I'm standing there like, I've never met this man a day in my life. Like, am I still on drugs? Like, is this, am I tripping? Like, I was standing there and she had such an attitude because I told her I'd never, never been to been that there. church before. And she had been trying to meet oh, Reverend Michael right. for months. And so she was so mad. And like, ultimately, nothing ever happened with her. And I thank God for her because... Her sole purpose in my life was to get me to To Agape. introduce you to it. And when Agape. I got to Agape, I just started going to the service. Then uh, they have spiritual uh, counselors there, which is kind of like a spiritual life coach or um, a therapist, if right. you will. And I started working with them one-on-one. 
while going to NA and AA meetings until right. eventually, like, I just, yeah, got sober and, yeah, here I am now. Clean and and is that what led you to meditation, the the church kind yes, of thing? Yes, the church. Right. They had, because um, we kind of did a form of it uh, growing up in a Southern Baptist kind of church, but it, they didn't call it that. Like, that was forbidden. It was basically right. like... Meditation was forbidden. Yeah. At because the church it was that, an Yeah, they, it was kind of like for them, it's like you're praying silently, which right. I think was just, it's really just semantics. You're all doing the exact same. Sure. We're closing our eyes and breathing and like having a conversation. And having good friendly. intentions in the universe. Exactly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so at Agape, I got to like really practice that and like really kind of like understand what it is. And it just slowly started to work for me. And it was a way for me to get back to little Andre again. Right, right. Yeah. What what a what an incredible thing that the thing that nearly killed you was also the thing that kind of was my like, saving saved grace. Me. And life is funny that way. Like the thing yeah. Yeah, it's life is really, really fascinating because the thing that you think could be your detriment might be used in a way that you never even thought possible right, and could be right, your greatest. Right, right. the like, thing you were running from. Yeah, the things the that's thing. generally what happens in life. I've learned the things that we run from the most are the things that if we embrace it and just relax into it, could be our greatest blessing. So you found that you found the new church. You started. Uh, practicing meditation and yes. then w at what stage were you like this is something that i want to do kind of semi-professionally and i want to Man. bring other people into i from the moment like i started doing it like I, when you first start doing it you're just like this is a joke like what is this <laughs> Like you fall asleep, you know. Well, I'm so or, happy to hear you say this because yeah. it sounds because you've been doing it for so long and hanging out with you. I'm like, wow, he's really good at this. It's like he's, I'm not that if good. If he at shaves this. his head, he might be the Buddha. Exactly. No, but seriously. <laughs> so it's helpful to hear you say that the first few yeah. rounds you're like sleeping through it. It is. It is. It's the. I mean, you don't. You can never fully like get it right. And if you can't get it right, that means you can never fully get it wrong. It's just a practice. Like anything else in life, like when you first got behind the wheel of a car or a motorcycle, you're just like, oh, I'm crushing this. No, you had practice. Right. And you practice a little bit every time or tying your shoes. Do you realize how good you are at tying your shoes without even thinking about it? Or the fact that you get into your car and you automatically put a seatbelt on. It's just, that's the thing. It's just like it, it's burned into your brain. It's a habit. A habit takes about 21 days until like it becomes like it, it starts to gel. And then the more you practice it after the 21 days, it just becomes more of a groove in your brain. It's like every memory you have. So did people start asking you to do it? Did you know that you wanted to like pay it forward and show the world meditation? Like, <laughs> to, ha, like <laughs> actually, it was kind of um, one of those things I never really thought about. Like, um, I, want to, I wanted to share it with the world. I want to share it with everybody. But I never thought about like being a teacher of it or like really like showing people how to do it. Um, I love being of service. So I was like, oh, this is right up my alley. But at the end of the day, like I'm very respectful of people and their belief systems and how they practice their worship in whatever way that they see fit. And sometimes when you talk about meditation, people freak out. Or if you talk about religion versus spirituality, people are scared. Or if you combine the two. Or if you, exactly. Like some people have a meditation yeah. practice because they're a high performer CEO, blah, blah, blah. And it has yeah. nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with religion. Like at the end of the day, you're closing your eyes and you're being consciously aware of the breath that is entering and exiting your body. The only difference is other than regular breathing in the regular world, you're just not paying attention to it. It's just you're on autopilot. But to be consciously aware, that is a whole nother monster. And then when you start to like really get into it and you get really good and you can like you can quiet your mind to the point where you can hear the blood flowing in your body. That's when you're on to something like that's the gold, because so many wonderful, like creative ideas are constantly being dropped, like hints are around us all the time. But because we have so much mental chatter, you can't catch it. It's like, how come? man, when I want to write this script, like how come I can't think of the ideas because you're trying to like get it right. And you're not allowing the good to come to you. Like, don't fight. Just relax. Be easy. Let it come to you. But it's a, it's a very different thing, especially as an athlete, as uh, most people, most of the listeners and everybody who, you know, attends a gym, as athletes, we're competitive. It's just what happens. Like, <laughs> I don't know any athlete that's not competitive. And we're taught that you have to win and you have to go after it, and you have to go get it and squeeze and be so strong. And it's just like, you really don't have to do that. Like if you just let go, it'll come to you and you'll become a magnet for everything that you want. So I think with meditation is, yeah. Now it's just, I, I really just think in a time in society right now, we're forced to be still. So it's like, why not make the most of it? 
and master yourself. That is why I reached out to you because <laughs> I didn't come. I came from a place of, hey, Andre, <laughs> do you think maybe you could send me a meditation <laughs> that I could follow maybe? And I asked for one <laughs> and you're like, yeah, sure. And I was like, well, maybe I'll just like give it to the Pharaoh's members, too, because like really I asked you to do it for me because yeah. I needed it and yeah. I needed to clear out that. Uh, all of the chatter is yeah. a good good way to say uh, describe that for my own story. Yeah. And so I just asked you to do one, and then I was like, "Oh, see, and look let's what happened! Do it look all. what happened! You asked, and whether you call it the universe, God, divine, doesn't matter. Semantics. You call it whatever you want, but you put an intention out there, and you didn't try to force it. You're a little like timid in asking, but you were very clear in what you wanted and what you needed. And look what happened." Like it's 21 true. days, like we got to hang out and like we were just blissfully excited about life again. Yeah, I got like, myself a life coach. Yeah, <laughs> that's so awesome. Like that's amazing because that's the beauty of setting intentions, like being conscious of what it is you actually want and being clear about what you want because a lot of time we don't really know what we want. We just don't want to feel bad. Sure. And yeah. meditation is a wonderful, wonderful way. Like you don't have to know the answers. You just relax until the answer comes to you. Mm. I mean, Emily, I'd, I'd say, you, I mean, you're a fairly, like, easy target because, you know, you are kind of, like, spiritual and you do have, like, yoga practices, that kind of thing. But for guys, kind of like, uh, the kind of ma typical male stereotype, okay. like, how, how do you get through to those people about meditation and the value of it? How do you kind of, like, break down some of us that have that kind of, like, tougher <laughs> exterior and, and don't feel comfortable almost, like, in that, in mm. that space? Well, for me, I just try to be the example. Like right. words don't teach, behavior does. And that's that's such a powerful, powerful thing. It's like you can tell somebody until you're blue in the face, if you do this, this will be the greatest thing that will ever right. happen to you. But until somebody walks the walk and tries it for themselves, you're just talking in vain. Yeah, but then sometimes it feels like, oh, well, that's just who, like to your point at the beginning. Well, that's just who you are and you're a different person than I am. Right. Like how could like how can it be helpful? Like just because it's helpful for you doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's going to necessarily be helpful for me because right. I'm a tough guy and I don't like do that. Like I don't access those feelings. Or blah, yeah. Blah, blah. And I tell them you can still be tough. Don't access those feelings. By all means, stay exactly the same as you want. And see what happens. Yeah, no, sit <laughs> nothing. Sit in your snakeskin boots. Exactly. <laughs> sit in your snakeskin boots. Just you sit in, in your pythons that you okay. cannot get in California. <laughs> and you just sit there and just be angry at the fact that you couldn't get these in California. And then you had to go somewhere else. Or you can try something new. You right. can still be a man and still be tough and like do whatever it is you want. This is a choice. And that's the beauty of it. Like you don't have to force anybody to do anything because I know it saved my life. Right. That's right. example right. enough. Right. Like, I'm right. still on this planet. Like, so I, don't, like, yeah. I know it works. Right. You're I know like, it I don't is need a to prove it to you. I yeah. just need to walk my own walk and eventually you'll get exactly. there. Exactly. And that's the thing. People pick up on that. It's like yeah. when they see you walk the walk, like people, like how you guys said, it's like Andre's just happy. Like, he's just, this is really who he is. Like, if you'd have just asked me or just been like, all right, come on, bro. You can tell me. No one's around. Like, it's it's fine. Just tell me. Right, right, like, right. what are you doing? That would have been one thing. and But then at the same time, it's like, you don't have to ask. Because after a while, you start to see, it's like, yo, this this is for real. Like, right. you feel it more than anything. Like, words don't teach. Energy is very creative. And you just feel it, no matter what is happening. And to your point of uh, creativity, like, before you were talking about how, like, your chatter and all of that, and, like, mm -hmm. you have so many ideas that come. Yeah. I feel like we have this, uh, like meditation is now a practice in order to like access your greatness. I yes. feel like people are finding yes. that Beautifully because put. like, how can I clear out all of this noise so I can be very intentional and, and, uh, yeah. and you know, let my f greatness flow through me. And sometimes that is, I have a really stressful job, a really high performing job. I have to be on a hundred percent of the time. And yeah. so meditation is a quick way for me to like drop into state or like if you're a Tony Robbins follower, yeah, like, you know, yeah. he has that practice at the beginning. It's like get in state. And that's yeah. what it is, is like how, uh, like everyone needs some sort of practice, whatever that ends up looking like yeah. to like drop into who they are so yeah. they can be the best of themselves for for their families or for exactly. their job or for the world. Exactly. And I think like it's, it's really um, a beautiful, beautiful thing to know that like you always have this access. Like people think you have to be a certain type of person. You had to be born 
in a certain part of the world or you have to be from a certain family or that works for you and not me. It's like, no, it doesn't. Like you just have to be open to it. And that is the biggest hump of like trying to get people <laughs> to like understand the benefits of a practice. Right. It's like because the world has taught you that this is like something that's religious or spiritual or whatever, there are certain rules you have to adhere to in order to do this. And I'm telling you, those are man-made rules. <laughs> those and I'm are trying bullshit. to get you to tap into a part of you that is not man-related. Like this, there is greatness in all of us, but has anyone ever taught you to tap into it? Some people say you have to do enough work to earn the greatness, and I'm telling you, meditation is a way to unlock that gate and allow that greatness to be unleashed on the world. Because it's in there, everybody has it. Everybody came here with a specific destiny, a specific purpose that only you can do. No one else in the world has your fingerprint. <laughs> If that's not a unique signature out of the billions of people on this planet, you are the only you in the entire universe, as far as we know. <laughs> you know, like you, it could be another Andre out there who yeah. is really the devil. I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to meet him and be like, oh, bro, you really have like I think red there's skin. actually that's another me. version of me in China. They're, they're made in a <laughs> Petri dish. Pretty sure they're cloning all of us. Um, what you, one thing that I find amazing and, and super interesting about this whole thing is, is the word energy because... As a like forty two year old guy now, how old are you? Uh, thirty six. You're thirty six. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm always striving for is is energy. Like, yes. how do I have more energy to do what I want to do? And I think a lot of us are reaching for a supplement or a caffeine drink or something that's going to give us more energy. And the fascinating thing about you is, you always have energy. Now I know you drink coffee and you have a good mm -hmm. diet and you you stay fit and you stay healthy, but you get up super early. You work super hard all day, but you always have good energy yeah. and that must be the meditation it must be that something is a form that you're of it. doing yes like, but notice how in everything you describe it was everything outside of you right that you take to put inside of you right. and i'm saying it's the opposite it's an inside out approach so if you clear out all of the fears the doubts the worries the anxieties the future based what you're gonna do the past of what you didn't get right and if you just stay here and I learn to love this person that's in here right now. There's no other thing that you can do. You you that has to come out. That but is I, so interesting because you're say you're almost saying it as if like energy is it, 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 like if you have low energy, sometimes that's like PTSD from yes, like the thing the anxieties brilliant. that you have exactly. in the future or the things that you're the day you had yesterday because yeah. you're not like living in this moment. Blah blah yeah. blah. Pete would argue that's not necessarily probably the case because he's like, no, I'm just drained now. Like I just didn't sleep very like, well. No, I'm actually I'm tired. Drained. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, I'm actually this. just I'm tired. Sleepy, yeah. Right. So, uh, but it sounds. No, but that's no, interesting because you're approaching yeah. it from like a much it's different a very, way of it's talking a vastly, about energy. Vastly different yeah. approach, and the world will teach you that you have to. That's. I mean, that's that's with everything. That's that's perfect marketing. It's like, oh, <laughs> you're not well. Let me give you pills. Let me give you this. Put this in your body. I don't care if it destroys you or all of your vital organs, but it might make you feel good for a second. And if it doesn't, I'll give you a discount on the next one. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Stop that right now. Everything you need is inside of you. Everything. Trust me. Believe me. Tr just take it on for 21 days. Ooh. Yeah. Take it on Whoa. for a day, a moment, nice. and just Whoa. try for 21 days to focus on what is here right now. The best place to be is here. Another plug. The best place yeah. to be is uh, right here. Brandon, and has think a, about, Brandon has a tattoo on his arm that exactly, says the best place, the best is place here, to be is here. Remember. That's not the universe making <laughs> like a demonstration. I don't know what is. But that's the beauty of it. Like It's all right here for 21 days or just for a day. Get a notebook and write down how many times you are comparing yourself to the past or planning on the future. And I guarantee you, your page will be filled up with the past and the future and none of it will be right here and right now. Brandon, I'm pretty sold on this. Are you pretty sold? I'm pretty sold on this. I've been sold. Uh, you've been sold already. Yeah. Do you meditate? I'm a believer. I do. I do. I, I, oh, you do. I haven't been doing it as much religiously as uh, I used to. Um, See, I, I don't. And I like... And I... I, I've listened to so many people talk about the benefits of it. I know it's would be so good for me, and yet I've never like. 
Yeah, that's an interesting it, thing like, to talk about because now mm, there is a yeah. hype around like yeah. most high performing people or most people say but, you quote but, unquote but, but, should but, but, be. But meditating. let me just say, let me just say, like no one's ever sold it to me the way that Andre's sold it to me today. Oof. Like, and because I genuinely know who Andre is and I see him on a daily basis, yeah, I know it's not just the guy talking and trying to sell me something. Right. Like I see, I see the result of this on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So it's, and yeah, that's it's, the it's that's incredible. the beauty of it. It's like I don't want anything from you. Right. Nothing. I gain no value whatsoever if you do it or if you don't. It does nothing for me because I'm. it's not about what I can get from you. It's about what I can share with you because if I can have this, it's possible you can have it and everybody can have it. But that's the thing. If they could just sit down and just be still. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, the good thing is for me. Now that Yellowstone's finished, like I, I could be using that time to meditate. You I mean, could, but then also, also meditation does not have to be like sitting still and closing your eyes and being quiet. That is a form of it. You could be riding a horse in the middle of Montana. Now we're talking. Or yeah. driving down the highway on your way to Montana, looking at the scenery, being still, being so present in the beauty, the horizon, playing with your son. That yeah. is a form of meditation in itself because meditation, the purpose, the intention behind it is to be still and to be present. Yeah. And that you're basically, you've been meditating. You just haven't done it the way that I've been doing it. That doesn't mean you're getting it wrong. Therefore, you can't get it right. And it's all good. Amazing. Yeah. The thing we forget is that there's a way to do it, but there's also not necessarily because we live in such a literal culture. Exactly. An idea that it has to be this. This is how like Pete said. We have, if you want to be this big or this strong, you're going to do this, this and that and some things that aren't that literal like meditation it's kind of like just sometimes just going from thought to thought recognizing it letting it go going yeah, on to the next thing that's a that's meditating like it, it comes in many different shapes and forms just like all of us do therefore none of us are wrong like yeah. we're all right in our own way so it's all good it's just an invitation that's it like i still love you just as much whether you meditate <laughs> whether you whether the you 21 know. day challenge yeah, or not whether you do it or not but i'm telling you, you keep saying so, 21 yeah days. what is it so so let's talk about this so there's a lot of people obviously listening that, that, that don't meditate like and they want to start meditating they don't really know how to go about it I'm i know there's a there's, huh? just peter <laughs> me uh, and there's a ton of uh, uh, there's a ton of apps out there and all that kind of stuff but mm-hmm. what would be an easy way for people to start meditating and tell us about this the, the course that you're, you're currently offering and that you and emily have been working on together yeah yeah so emily and i um i had the honor and the privilege and the blessing of working with emily to put it was together. the best, best month of her life by the way <laughs> <laughs> Other than nice, getting nice married and having a baby. <laughs> we had a wonderful time putting together um, a 21 day like meditation and mobility challenge. And it was outstanding. And it was just pretty much just 21 days to just consciously start a practice. A practice of being quiet, being still, turning off uh, your phone or any other kind of electronic device or the TV or the radio. Um, and just getting comfortable and just sitting with yourself. And really just creating a practice and doing that. Um, didn't do any chants, didn't do any like, you know. But we do have Lindsay with sound oh, bowl and she singing. She did such oh, a beautiful so job. so beautiful, yes. yeah. Do I, do I need anything to do? do no, need you need nothing. Or? So it's, no. it's essentially, we it's 21 days and there are 21 videos, a video every day with a different mm-hmm. theme, a different um, reflection or theme, uh, mm-hmm. if you will. And uh, the meditations run between 10 minutes mm-hmm. and then they grow over the course of uh, the 21 days yes. too. And the yeah. last one ends at around 20 minutes. Yes. So between 10 and 20 minute commitment. Um, and it's uh, pre-recorded. You follow along and you need nothing. Just sit It's 20 through. minutes like mobility and meditation? Or? No. So this oh. is just the meditation track. Oh, right. yeah. So uh, we kind of separated them because, you know, some people may just want to start with one and then kind of dip yeah. their feet in. So yeah. we have the mobility track, the meditation track, and mm-hmm. then you can bundle them both. <laughs> uh, and 20 minutes each? And um, the mobility one is never more than 10 minutes. Okay. So yes. 30 minutes total. Uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. it, would be, it would be 30 minutes total if you decided to. Do both both them. Things, so. Yeah, you really do. And I liked when I was, because uh, of, uh, of course, we put the 21 day <laughs> challenge together. And then the first time that we launched it, I went through it. Mm-hmm. And I found that I really liked doing the meditation in the morning and mm. then the mobility, like post workout. 
Yeah. Some people like yeah. doing the mobility before they went to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, really, it, like there are two separate videos, so they're not within the same thing. So you can kind of do them on your own. Yeah. And it's a gradual process. Like we don't just throw you in there saying it's like, oh, well, you got to be the Buddha day one. If you're not, then you're just a terrible person. No, yeah, you're you an amazing person. And the fact that like you're even open to doing it, kudos, you're doing great. Do you, do you meditate in the morning or the evening? Oh man, I, I, I you're both. Always, yeah, always yeah. I just like to me, He's it's meditating just like right now. yeah, I'm doing it right now. You don't even know. I'm not even sitting in this chair, floating. Um, but I tend to do it um, in the mornings uh, when I get up first thing in the morning because when you wake up in the morning, your brain is in a state of theta, and theta is pretty much just like a think of it as like a flat like line. It's just a steady stream of consciousness. So as soon as you wake up, you're still kind of in that steady stream. So the first thing that you put your attention on that will kind of just be like the first kind of stream that you're putting in there. So imagine you wake up and the first thing you do is jump on Instagram or the first thing you do is jump on Twitter or CNN. Oh, God forbid, CNN. Please stop watching CNN. Constantly negative news. That's what it stands for. But if that's what you do, that's what you're doing. And my intention is when I wake up, I want to put in something positive, something that makes me feel good, like an affirmation or something. And so as soon as I wake up, that's why I try to jump into meditation and just start the day off with that kind of vibration, that kind of energy. So no matter what I'm doing, it's like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I can't control the day, but I know as long as like I maintain this practice of being aware of what I'm feeling and I started off great, it's like, okay, I got a better shot than you know waking up and talking about Donald Trump or something like that. This is yeah. a very different energy to start the day off on. Okay. So I do it in the morning. Um, some Most of the time I do it before bed as well. I try yeah, to do Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably at the end of the day, like just to get rid of the like, yeah, the empty noise the tank. from the day. That would yeah, be, uh, exactly. Uh, empty the tank because you're going to accumulate, like you, you can't really help it. Um, you just kind of tend to, you know, I call it pig pen dust. It's almost like, you know, when we do the leaf blower to get ready in the mornings. Yeah. Um, like the dust goes into the air and it lands on you. No matter what you do, you still have some on you. And it's right. kind of like, Think of that as like other people's fears, other people's doubts, other people's worries, other people project their stuff onto you. And you might not even know. So you're walking, you come back at home, and now you just collected all of that energy from the world that you don't want and doesn't feel good. And meditating is a way to like get it off of you or get a sage stick or um, some Palo Santo, just something that makes you feel good. Like that's the intention. Always do things that make you feel good. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so people can access this how like th- through well, that. Well, right? uh, if you go to the show notes at the bottom of this, po- uh, at the right, if you're absolutely, at the, be a link for that. yeah, there's a link for that. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's www.jointhepack.fit slash slow dash down. Nice. Slow down. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa, slow that's down. the Whoa. goal. Slow down. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you'll be able to see the mobility track, the meditation track. You can bundle them. It's also worth noting we never talked about the price because we know you're sold. But it's worth <laughs> noting that it's a dollar a day so yeah. it is this 21 day challenge mm-hmm. is 21 dollars uh for either the mobility or meditation track yes. you can bundle them for 30 yeah. can i get um, any uh kind of family discount friends and family or not it's hard times i can't believe you would ask for a discount <laughs> <laughs> I'll, pay, I'll pay full course i'll pay full course i'm fine you guys are the best i love it but i i really i really for all the listeners like please 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 I'm so grateful that you listen to this podcast. I'm grateful to be a part of it. But if anything, meditation is truly a gift into and of itself. I don't have to sell it to you. I invite you. This is an invitation. I don't know if you needed to save your life. I don't know if you were looking for something, but let this be the message the universe is sending you. Meditation, you will not get anything from it. Okay, take a second, swallow that. You don't get anything from meditation, but I will tell you, if you do it, you will lose fear. You will lose doubt. You will lose worry. You will lose the past you. You will let go of future you, and you will fall in love with right now you. That's all love I wanted it. to say. I'm, start, I'm gonna start this next week. Good. You're gonna keep me accountable on this. Good. And um, if you're out there listening and you wanna, you wanna join me, start next week, then I'm gonna start this on I might start on Sunday. 
Sunday's a good day to start. Oh, wow, it's perfect. Yeah, because you're just like kind of relaxed. You, you don't want to do anything anyway. you tell yourself Monday and then Monday comes yeah. Yeah. and slaps you in the face. And you're like, <laughs> I can't start anything new. So instead yeah. of yeah. watching reruns of Yellowstone, I'm going to start my meditation. You can still watch reruns. Just yeah, sit just meditate first and then you'll minutes. enjoy it even more. <laughs> So, so yeah, so I've got meditation and Kevin Costner. Nice, keep me, nice. Keep me That's on the, awesome. On the straight now. <laughs> nice support the gym, so I'm in. So. Keep me off the ledge. <laughs> um, how else can people reach you, Andre? Um, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm not a Facebook guy, but uh, my handle is a hall three eighty two. Um, on either one, uh, or you can, I'm a hall 382 at Yahoo, at iCloud, at Gmail, because in eighth grade, that's what the suggestive Yahoo thing spit out to me. <laughs> so I just thought a hall 382 is just easy all over the board. So if you have any questions, concerns, comments, like I'd love to hear from you, but I you're love not, you guys. Not just great in meditation, you're, you're single handedly keeping you, Yahoo alive. No one <laughs> Probably. else. Probably. No one else. Probably. I, I used to have the AOL, but I forgot the password. Now I can't get it to the account anymore, but there was an A Hall 382 at AOL, too. Like, it's just easy. It's easy probably easy. still there. Most likely. God only knows, like, what's in there now. But, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. A Hall 382, guys. Yep, You've that's it. Here. There it is. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, that was a fascinating podcast. Yeah, thank you so um, amazing. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, guys. I'm so terrible. grateful. Thank you for I'm sharing. Just planting seeds. Just planting yeah. seeds. I mean, thank you for sharing because I know that's, uh, that that shit digs deep, but it's it, it's important, and um, I think it's, a lot of people are going to get a lot a lot about it, a lot out of it. So thanks so much. Good. Yeah, I'm it. grateful. My pleasure. All right, guys. We we'll catch you soon. Thanks, Brandon. No problem, guys. Have a good one.